All right, so we're gonna be replacing the battery on this mid 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro model A1398. So first we're gonna need a Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver. And then we'll also need a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. We'll also use this thin flat tool. Um, this is like a spatula. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to get one. You can buy something like this. This is like an icing or frosting spatula, um, but I did have to kind of shave it a little to make it work better. Um, if you need a link to that, I can send you one. Uh, the other option I've heard people use is uh, dental floss, but I've tried that and I've never gotten that to work. So I don't know. Um, they've also tried, said they've used fishing line. Anyways, uh, first thing we're gonna do is remove all the screws from the bottom. Uh, you want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that. In the pattern, I remove them. Sorry, I know it's loud um, or noisy. There's They're doing like construction outside. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and remove all these screws. Again, you want to keep them all in order. So I put them on my desk in this rectangular pattern. Um, the two screws in the back here, if you did some, uh, manage to mix them up already, they're shorter than all the rest. Okay, so keep that in mind. And yeah, let's go ahead and continue removing all the screws. If this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, so we're almost done. We only got one screw left and then we can go ahead and pop the bottom cover off. We're likely gonna have to clean the inside. Oh, one other thing, make sure to shut down your MacBook properly. So log in and then shut it down if you haven't already. Okay, anyways, let's get the bottom cover off. So we go back here. So we grab on this piece here and we're gonna just kind of wiggle and pull it like this. All right, I use my palm so that way it kind of like semi bends it, like flexes it like this, all right, to make the cover a little shorter. And here you can see how dusty it is. Wow, that's pretty dusty and it's all like uh, fine powder dust. There's also like some things of lint in here. Okay, so we're gonna have to take this outside, clean it up. I'm basically just going to use a toothbrush to loosen up the dust, and then I have an electric air blower to blow all the loose dust away. Um, if you want, you can actually disconnect the battery, I guess, first. Some people always like tell me like, hey, why well, you didn't remove the battery yet? But anyways, let's go ahead and Go there so here you can see underneath this there's this plastic layer on top we're basically gonna go under on both sides okay and we're gonna pull that up just like this okay so there we go we got the battery disconnected all right so I'm gonna clean the dust out of here and I'll be back okay let me zoom out a bit again so you can kind of just see this all right and I'll be back see you guys soon all right so I'm back you can see it's a lot cleaner inside okay now let's go ahead and get the battery out. So we're going to switch over to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Um, if you're wondering, this process is almost exactly the same as the 2012 all the way until um, uh, the Retina, 2012 Retina, all the way until the um, 2015 Retinas. All right. We're using the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver to remove the screws from the speakers. All right. And again, you want to keep the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. Okay. All right, now that we got those out, let's also go ahead and remove the cable for the trackpad. Um, some of the models won't use the trackpad uh, cable on top here, so that's one difference. Usually all the models with the motor in it, uh, with this taptic feedback motor down here, um, are going to use this somewhat similar style, all right? After we remove those two screws, we're gonna pull that off. Actually, I should be zooming in here for you guys, sorry. Okay, we're gonna now disconnect this cable. Um, we do have to peel up this adhesive. Okay, um, let's see, okay. Normally I would separate these two layers, but it's peeling itself up with it. So let's see if we can get them to separate. Okay, hold the other layer of adhesive down there. All right, here you can see it's peeling up, there we go. All right, and here you can see there's one screw over here. This is also a T5 or Torx 5 screw. And there's one more under on the other side. Um, but let's go ahead and peel this apart first and disconnect the um, 
trackpad cable or touchpad cable. So I use my fingernail under here and then I just pop it up a little bit and then go to the other side and do the same. And there you go. You want to be careful not to fold this cable. So I'm going to keep my finger here and slowly peel it, pulling it this way while I'm pulling it up. All right. And that keeps it from kind of creasing it. All right. We're going to work our way all the way down. All right. So same thing. I'm going to hold my finger here. You don't want to crease this. All right. So we're just doing that. And the reason we hold that is so when the adhesive runs out, it doesn't just fling it out and tear it. All right. Then we're going to pull this tab back here. We're going to flip this latch. I'm using my thumbnail. All right. We're going to flip this latch up. Excuse me. There is adhesive underneath this cable. So we're going to pull it up slightly and back. All right. So just like this, and you want to do it slowly because the adhesive will slowly peel away. So we're just going to slowly peel this. Okay. And there we go. And if this thing is coming apart, you can just wrap it back on itself. Okay. I don't know why this is coming out. The adhesive underneath, I guess, isn't working, but normally this thing is like wrapped around like that. Okay. To hold it. But as you can see, it's just coming out on its own. All right. And we're going to set this cable aside. Okay. Next thing, we're going to, of course, remove the other screw here, and then we can go ahead and continue or start the process of removing the adhesive underneath the battery. Um, so this is going to be a long, somewhat painful process, um, so you'll see in a bit, but uh, let's go ahead and start. Okay, so I'm going to turn the laptop or MacBook over this way. Let's zoom out a bit, and I'm going to use this thin tool. Again, some people use floss or um, fish fish line or whatever, um, but I'm going to use this, okay? And some people tell me, oh no, don't use metal tools. I mean, I've been doing this a very long time. I've done a lot of these. I've never had a problem. The thing is, this thing isn't sharp, okay? You don't want to use like a knife for this, um, and you want to make sure the tool is very flexible. You don't want to use something sharp and uh, stiff like a knife, because then it will actually cut into the battery because it won't be able to flex at the bottom here. All right, so what we're going to do, um, also this tool, because I've used it to pry a lot of things, it has a little like bend in it at the end. So because of that, I'm going to angle the bend downwards. So when it goes underneath the battery, it will go underneath. If you put it this way, it will cut into the battery. Okay. So those are all tips to keep in mind, depending what kind of tool you're using. You don't have to use the same tool as me, but uh, something as similar as you can, that will be good. I've heard some people use credit cards to do it too, but credit cards I feel are too thick. Anyways, we're going to start over here and we're just going to push the tool in okay just like that and you want to try and keep it in underneath the battery you don't want to go at an angle you want to go straight through okay then we're going to pull it out move it over and then do the same thing okay all right you're going to see that if you've watched my 2013 uh, 2012 battery removals you'll see the difference in the adhesive um, these ones usually are easier to remove the adhesive from and you'll see that once I get to the end all right so there we go I think we got that out all right oh we might have missed a little there we go okay so there we go we got one battery pack up if you want at this point you can actually put the speaker screws back in for there okay the main reason we had to remove the speaker screws was to get underneath this one and I didn't mention, but you want to be careful with the speaker because part of it is going underneath the motherboard. And if you pull it up too hard, you can break the speaker. I've never had that issue, but uh, it is possible if you don't know what you're doing and you just yank it really hard. Um, yeah. All right. We're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay. Same thing. We're going to just lift up the speaker. I just grab it by this piece here. I just pinch that and grab it. Um, if you can't, because it kind of takes a little bit of fingernails. If you just have, if you cut your fingers really short, you might want to let them grow out a little bit. But anyways, let's go ahead and get underneath here and we're going to do the same thing over here. All right, so just push the tool in, cut all the way. Then we're going to go down to this side and do the same thing, okay? Just like that. Same thing. All right. And same thing over here. All right, so there we go. And we've got this out, all right? And you don't ever want to like try and slide the tool this way when you're still cutting the adhesive. Once it's all cut, it's fine to do that. But if you cut one side and you try and slide it here, it's gonna cut into the battery, so you don't wanna do that, all right? All right, now we're gonna go ahead and continue going down to the larger packs. I'm probably gonna have to zoom out for you guys to see this better, but uh, let's go ahead and do that, all right? You wanna be careful. Um, when you get to the middle battery packs, 
and I'll show you in a bit why. But let's go ahead and continue cutting all of this adhesive out. Okay, and then we're going to rotate it. We're going to cut to this corner, but we can't get up here. So once we cut all the adhesive out from these corners, then we're basically just going to peel it up. Or if you can, you can kind of lift the battery up enough over here to kind of go this way. And there we go. All right. We're going to go flip this over and we're going to do the same thing again. Okay. We're going to start down here. It technically doesn't matter if you start on the left or right or top or bottom, as long as you can just pull the tool or push the tool straight through the adhesive. Okay. So that's very important. You don't want to try and go sideways. All right. So just like that. Because you want to try and keep the tool as flat as possible as it's going between the adhesive. All right. Okay, so there we go. All right, I'm going to go diagonal like this again to cut that. All right, and we can double check all of this. Looks good. All right, we're going to get our way under here, and then we're going to, again, just push through there. Okay, and I think, do we miss something? Okay, we missed a little bit in the middle there. And there we go. Here you can see that pack is loose as well. All right. All right, that's good. Okay, so the middle one is a little bit trickier, not too much, um, but because the trackpad is raised up slightly, so let me see if I can show you this. I have to tip it forward so I can do that. Um, but because the trackpad is raised slightly, if you just go straight in, you'll hit this metal piece. So you actually have to raise it slightly, as you can see, to get above this piece here. That black, there's a black metal plate there. Um, so we're going to go like that. When you do this, you want to be careful not to go into this direction. So you want to make it, it to be safe if you don't know what you're doing. You can angle it more that way. Because if you go this way, it can go into the logic board and you can damage something. So anyways, let's go ahead and continue cutting the adhesive, okay? I'm probably going to have to zoom out a bit more again because I have to push this against my body as I pull the tool in, okay? So there we go. Once you cut that, you can pull it back out, work your way over a little bit. Same thing, push the tool in to cut through the adhesive, okay? Just like that, pull it back out. And then we're going to same thing, cut through the adhesive. Honestly, somebody should make a better tool design for this, um, where you have a better handle, maybe like a grab handle like this. But the problem with that is um, then your knuckle will hit this piece. So I kind of have to be very careful with where I place my hand for this, because I don't want to cut my hand on the sharp metal casing here. Okay. And then same rule applies for the trackpad. You want to angle it more inwards if you're not careful um, or if you don't know what you're doing because you don't want to accidentally cut the trackpad trying to get the adhesive out. Okay, so there we go. Okay, and you can test the adhesive by gently sliding it left and right. And there we go. Okay, we can now rotate this over again. And we're going to do the same thing with the last and third and final battery pack. All right, I might have to keep an eye on my phone because I have customers that were telling me they were coming soon. All right. Give me a second, sorry about that. Okay, let's go ahead and cut the adhesive here. All right, and we're gonna work our way over, continue cutting. You wanna also be careful with the motherboard or the logic board. Um, you wanna make sure that you're keeping yourself grounded touching something metal, something that will release the electrical static charge from your body to the ground. That way you don't accidentally fry anything in here, okay? Alright, there we go. Get in there and just keep working your way down. Again, be careful with the trackpad side. And there we go, okay. So we're almost there. We're going to have to peel up all the old adhesive residue. Um, again, this is usually a pain. Um, this model's not as bad as the older models. But um, yeah, all right, let's go ahead and lift this out. Oh, I got a customer calling. So we're going to lift this out. All right, and there you can see the adhesive underneath. And this is what the battery looks like under. All right, let me take this phone call, and I'll be back. All right, see you guys in a bit.
All right, I'm back. So let's go ahead and continue removing this um, adhesive. So let me see. First thing I'm going to try is using the plastic razor blade. All right, so usually what I can do on these slightly newer ones, the ones that are after 2012, 2013, we can peel up some of the adhesive. Let me actually zoom in a bit so you can see better. Okay, so we can peel up some of the adhesive and then we can grab that and slowly peel it away and minimal residue comes out. Let me see here. Okay, so we're gonna grab that and slowly peel it up. That. All right, there we go. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and do this side. All right, same thing. And slowly peel this up. There we go. I'm going to peel this up. this out all right so as you can see this one mostly adhesive if the thing got cut through cleanly it's easier these ones where it kind of got scraped out is a little bit more trouble and you can see residue stays so to clean that up we're gonna use some rubbing alcohol okay but for now we're just gonna remove all the black foam layer on top so that the rubbing alcohol can penetrate the adhesive and kind of get it to dissolve. All right, so we're going to peel this up. And just peel that up. All right, the more clean you can peel it up, the better. Um, but most of the time you're going to end up having stuff left over. I'm assuming if you were able to get the floss method to work that um, it wouldn't get scraped off and it would peel a lot cleaner but I couldn't get the floss method to work. I don't know if there's something special or some kind of floss that people use that works better. But uh, anyways, fill this up. Okay. Just gonna get all this out. go. Let's go ahead and move this over to here. All right. And peel this side. The middle one is a bit more difficult, so I'll show that once we get all of this out because it sticks to this black metal pad thing plate a lot stronger. Okay. As you can see, this is a lot easier to peel up than the other model. <clears throat> if you're not sure what I'm talking about or you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly recommend looking up the 
2012 or 2013 MacBook Pro battery replacement videos, the Retina ones. Sometimes I don't write Retina in the title, so just search 2012, 2013, and you'll probably find it. All right. Yeah, this one's. Residue. There we go. Look at this. Peel that up. This up. And peel this up. All right. Let's get the middle part out. Let's see. Hopefully it will come out easier than usual, but usually not. Let's see here. Usually this is going to take a lot of um, rubbing alcohol to clean up, but let's see. Okay, we'll slowly peel this. Come on, don't tear on me. Good. Oh, it's actually coming out nicely. There we go. Oh, tore. And as you notice, it's good to go slow doing this. You can't just tear it out quickly. If you go quickly, you'll just end up tearing the adhesive. Okay. There we go. Wow, this is actually peeling up quite nice. Okay, We're getting there, guys. Two more pieces and then we clean up the residue. Just like that. Okay, one more here. This one's all torn up, so it's going to be a bit difficult. Let's try flipping it over. All right. Okay, slowly, carefully. All right, let's peel this. go. All right. I'm going to scrape this up.
All right, let's clean this up. So I'm gonna use some 91% isopropyl alcohol. All right, we're just gonna get some paper towel here, fold it up. All right, we're gonna pop this open. We're gonna get some rubbing alcohol in there. And, or if you want, you can even pour it directly on the thing, but uh, I'm gonna avoid doing that. And let's go ahead and wipe this stuff up. So as you can see, if it's a little bit difficult, then you can go ahead and pour it on. I'm gonna lift the board up so it kind of doesn't have to pour so from so high. Okay, so let me show you here. So we've got the rubbing alcohol in there. Okay, it won't really damage any of the electronics, but you don't want it to mix with the residue and debris and gunk and then go in the electronics because it can like cause it to flow into the circuits and cause damage. So yeah, all right, so here you can see, we just get the rubbing alcohol in there. All right, we can also use this to kind of help get the rubbing alcohol into this stuff. And I kind of want to try and avoid the screw holes because I don't want it to soak into the trackpad. Okay. Uh, hold on, I'm getting a call. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and continue scraping the stuff up. Oops, give me a second. One more second, sorry. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue scraping this up. That call caused the... was too long, and then the rubbing out call. It dries up pretty quick. So now I gotta soak it again. back up here because it all evaporated. Okay, and we're going to now scrape off. Oops, sorry. Am I going out of view? Okay, sorry about that. I was going out of view. We're going to scrape up the adhesive over here. Okay, then we're going to use the paper towel, wipe up that gunk, wipe up that goop. Okay, and we're going to use the excess rubbing alcohol to try and clean up the residue some more. Okay, let's go ahead and put some on this side as well. Alright, so we're going to go on this side now, and scrape up this adhesive residue. Okay. Scrape it up, scrape it up. it's coming out and then once we get all that up we're just going to wipe it all clean okay you can see all that goopy stuff spreading around so we got to switch to a clean paper towel again all right that dry it up more rubbing alcohol and paper. And let's wipe this up. Okay. 
have some adhesive residue stuck under there, so I kind of want to try to get it out. Okay, there we go. And there we go. Clean that up. We're going to use one more clean paper towel to make sure everything is nice and clean. Quit rubbing alcohol on it. Okay, there's still some residue here that I kind of need to get off. Or you don't technically need to get the residue off. You can actually just stick the battery in here and not have it stick down completely. But uh, I like to try and make sure everything works properly the way it was before. So let's go and do this. All right. And actually, if you want, you can actually leave the adhesive off, and you, and then you can actually use that as a way to um, uh, to make it easier to replace the battery in the future. Though sticking it down to these metal surfaces does help with heat dissipation, so keep that in mind. Um, if you don't peel the adhesive off, it might cause the battery to fail early because it runs hotter. Okay. Okay. There we go. Dry it all up. Okay, now we're going to reinstall the new battery. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab that. Okay. So the battery looks like this. Let's zoom out a bit. All right, here we go. And then we're going to just peel this up. But first thing you want to do is get this here and make sure it lines up and fits properly. Okay. Oh, we can't exactly because of this plastic here. So you do want to make sure that the top lines up right if you drop it. Okay. Make sure that if you get it in that the top can line up right. It's important because we're going to have to line up those two screw holes. And that looks good. The other thing is this cable usually is a bit long. So let me show you how you fix that. So what you do is you take this and at the end closest to here, you fold that down like this, okay? After that, you put your fingernail or whatever in between here and you fold it up halfway, okay? And once you do that, you can kind of push this in just like that and there you go. Okay, so let's go ahead now and stick the battery in. We're gonna peel this off, the protective coating. You do wanna leave the other part on, okay? And then what we're going to do, we're going to drop this in and monitor where those screw holes are to make sure that it's going lined up. Okay, if my head gets in the way, I'm sorry, but there we go. Okay, drop it in. Looks good. Make sure all the packs are clearing all these edges so that it's sitting flat. Then we can go ahead and get those T5 or Torx 5 screws in. Okay, so get the screw, line it up. Good. Get the second one. All right, and we'll tighten that down. I know it's zoomed out quite a bit, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. All right, and again, this battery part, the cable, you wanna make sure that it can uh, go past there. And if you want, you can check here and make sure it can line up. All right, we're not gonna plug it in yet, so you wanna be careful not to plug it in because you don't wanna power this thing up yet. All right. Next thing we're going to do, after everything looks good, you can go ahead and push all of this down. We're going to peel this off. The way you do this is you roll it back, okay, like this. You don't want to pull it straight up. You want to roll it off like this. And the reason is you don't want to separate the layers inside the battery, okay? Okay. And it also helps to kind of go at like an angle. It peels off a lot easier, as you can see. Okay, so if you want, you can go at an angle like this. Once it becomes harder to peel, you can start rolling it the other way. And then you can go the other way and just keep doing that until you get the entire thing off. And there we go. So we got the entire adhesive thing off. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and put the trackpad cable in. Let's zoom in here. Okay. All right. So this, we're going to hold this tab out of the way. Make sure this tab is flipped up. Let me zoom in more so you guys can see a bit better. Okay, we're gonna go at an angle like this. You don't wanna put it straight in because then it's just gonna catch on the adhesive and get stuck. So we go at an angle like this. And then once you get it in the slot, you can lower it down a little as you're kind of pushing it in into the slot. Okay, so just like that. 
and there we go. So that's in. Slide your finger over to latch it down. Then we're going to zoom out here so you can see better. And we're going to go ahead and plug this in. I'm going to keep this part up. We're going to plug this in first. All right. Once that's clicked in, we're going to go along here and then just push that down. Perfect. All right. Next thing we're going to do, um, we're going to transfer this piece over so we can peel this off completely. Okay. You want to slowly peel this and separate it. So hopefully the adhesive stays attached. Here you can see sometimes that foam stuff will tear, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. It's not really needed. There we go. We'll set the old battery aside again. And then we can put this on top here. So I kind of line up the bottom there and then we're going to put that battery in later, but let's go ahead and put the metal plate for the trackpad cover in. All right. Oh, I just realized I only reconnected one of the battery or put the screws back for one of the batteries. I mean the speakers, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and get that screw in. We'll put the other speaker one in after this, line that up. And I just loosely, loosely fit the screws first. Then we can go ahead and tighten it down. Tighten that down. All right, let's go ahead and get this, these screws in. Here we go, just like this. And this one down here. There we go. Now we got all of that in. Let's go ahead and reconnect the battery. Let me zoom in a bit here so you can see better. It helps to do this somewhat at a diagonal angle. So what you do is you kind of get the one corner in first. And then once you get that, you can kind of rest it down. And then you can kind of adjust this to line up and push that into place. Good. All right. I don't know why this is somewhat bulging up here. It's kind of weird. Let's go ahead and peel this up and see if we can kind of at least get this to sit a bit more flat. Okay. So, oops, sorry. So we're going to just peel that, pull it flat, and then you can go ahead and stick that down. There you go. It's still a little bit sticking up, but that's all right. We'll now take the bottom cover. All right. And we'll just put this back on. And last, we're going to do a PRAM and SMC reset to make sure everything is good. Um, sometimes it might look okay, and then after doing a PRAM and SMC reset, it might not start up right. So it's always good to do that just to make sure the hardware is working properly because the PRAM and SMC reset cause it to initialize and allow it to work properly, all right? So we're gonna go Control, Option, Shift on the left side, power button. That's how you do a uh, SMC reset. Um, if you have the charger in and it's orange, it's a good way to test the power button and these three buttons because when you push it, the orange light will go green and then back to orange, all right? Next thing we're going to do, we're going to do a PRAM reset. So to do that, let me go over here, push the power button, and then hold command option P and R. Assuming the battery is charged, which it was shipped new, like new so it should have charged. There you go. Once, you, If you keep holding this, you'll see the screen shut off. Then you know you can let go, and it should chime a second time. That's how you know you did the PRAM reset properly. So you don't want to do anything. You see it turned itself back on, and that's how we know we did it right. The computer should boot up, and we should be okay. All right, so that's pretty much it. We're gonna shut this down, put back the remaining screws, and that's all there is to it. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Other than that, that's all there is to it. All right, we're gonna get all these screws back in. You're welcome to stay as I get them all back in. But yeah, that's all there is. And thanks for watching. All right, let's get all these in. All right. And then we're good to go. Last one. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Bye. Let's drop this.